What's up you guys? Welcome back again to your Hero Picks headquarters. Today we're continuing our full set review of Disney Plus with the Uncommons. So if you haven't seen the Commons, make sure you go check that out first, but without further ado, let's get right back into it. All right, and starting us off with the Uncommons for Disney Plus here, we've got Black Widow, post-apocalyptic Black Widow. So yeah, she looks pretty great. They really nailed the, the look of the What If show, I think, with all these scopes so far uh, but taking a look at what she can do we got steel energy and stealth traded uh, avengers shield uh future martial artist spy keywords pretty good there uh running shot precision strike and range combat expert so she's actually got a 12 for three with precision strike is great five range double target then late dial she gets some plasticity blades with close combat expert you know, probably don't want to risk the blades too much unless you really need a hit for like four or five for some reason. Um, and the super senses is great too. And uh, yeah, the traded steel energy and stealth is actually really great. Um, you know, with that close combat expert helps her hit to steal energy and heal back up some. And the stealth helps keep her alive while she's running around shooting at people and everything. So yeah, for 50 points, she's just another good Black Widow. We do have a lot of great Black Widows, so... Um, I can't really say there's much that stands out about her to me, but, you know, they did kind of capture the spirit of the post-apocalyptic thing with the steel energy traded, I think, that kind of gives her a little something different. But up next, we got a big one, the Doctor Strange Supreme. Uh, his episode in What If was, of course, one of the best, and uh, he is insane for the points, too. I mean, <laughs> he's a lot of points, though. Uh, so he's only got mystical keyword. Improved targeting for hindering is great. Uh, he's got the plus five trait that he can start the game with the cloak of levitation equipped. So we'll just take a quick look at what that does. Again, this doesn't come with him. It comes with the super rare Spider-Man. But if you want to know for that, he does get flight, plasticity, and sidestep. Um, so you're definitely going to want to give him the, the cloak for the flight plasticity and sidestep those are all three really good to have for him but he does have energy shield deflection and invincible on his special damage power which is great and uh yeah so for 195 or 95 points or again really it's going to be 200 100 with the cloak um, eight range double target 12 movement running shot, 12 attack penetrating blast, 19 with energy shield invincible, and 4 damage with range combat expert. Um, he's got power cosmic, so you can't outwit him, and he's got willpower, and he's got mystic, so if you do hit him, you're taking a damage back. And uh, again, if you got the cloak, he's also got the sidestep and the, uh, the flight, so he can fly around. Um, so running shot for six with sidestep potentially gives you an eight square reach with an eight range. That's a 16 square reach by himself. Uh, he ignores hindering terrain for line of fire. He's going to have a 13 for five penetrating damage shot there. Um, pretty nuts. And you're going to have to hit at least a 21 trying to shoot him. Um, so yeah, you really want to get up close to fight this guy. Otherwise he's going to just tear you apart and then, you know, mid-dial, he gets some pulse wave, super senses, and prob. And uh, he does get some steel energy, regen, outwit, and stealth there at the back end, um, which is, uh, honestly, it's a really cool, you know, it's all black. And, I mean, the stealth helps keep him safe. Uh, you got regen or steel energy to heal up, and you got outwit to kind of support you as well. So very, very cool. Um, he's very, very fun character and uh, very powerful uncommon as well. So for all that, he's probably one of my favorites of all the uncommons. Next up here, we got Mobius M. Mobius from the Loki show. You know, looking good in his suit there. Uh, this guy's pretty great. I've used him a couple times. He's got some pretty interesting stuff going on here. So he starts out with uh, leadership and once per turn for all characters with this effect. When a friendly character within range uses face teleport and moves four squares or less, after resolutions, they may make a close attack. Very good, um, especially with all the Lokis from this set, basically having phase teleport, um, you know, really works out. And he can use this on himself, too, because he's a friendly character within range. Uh, so he could phase teleport four squares and punch somebody, you know, not great with a nine attack, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Um, he's also got leadership there and TK and police. So for only 30 points, you know, he's helping people move around with telekinesis. 
He's given us, you know, the extra actions with leadership. He's helping us out with police and potentially letting people punch after they face teleport, which is just amazing. He's honestly really, really great for 30 points. And uh, I would recommend trying him out if you haven't already. Next up, we got Ravana Renslayer, uh, also from Loki, you know, Mobius's boss here. And uh, she's pretty good too. She does also some really cool things. So she's got prob control and friendly characters with a shared keyword within range and line of fire have safeguard opposing probability control. So pretty cool. You know, they can't be probed by your opponent and uh, she can prob them if need be. And again, only 30 points. You got police team ability, 18 defend, the prob special. She can phase around. She can double target in cap some stuff. You know, not bad for the 30 points. The, the prob protection is very cool, and uh, I did have to use her in sealed. She was one of the only probbers in sealed, so she was great for that. But otherwise, still pretty useful for the points. Next up is a Vision. This is from the special WandaVision spooktacular episode where he was in the Halloween costume that, you know, looks similar to his uh, original comics costume. Now, this vision has traded shape change when he uses it and succeeds, heal him one click. All of the spooktacular ones have that. It's a very useful trait. He's got a stop click, which is just stop. Uh, he's got close combat expert and exploit weakness, so he's pretty deadly up close. He's got mystic seam ability, um, so if they do hit him, you know, they're taking a click back. Flight and stealth, um, 18 invuln with the shape change as well, and two damage with the close combat expert and exploit, so really 12 for three penetrating, um, and he's got that stop click. Good bit of health there with a stop and this traded shape change to potentially heal up. I mean, I think for 45, he's actually pretty great. If he had some charge or something, I think he'd be pretty nuts for the points. Um, you know, if we ever get like an equipment that gives charge, that would be awesome. I would love to try him out with that. But as is, he's kind of more fun. If you really just want to play all the spooktacular ones together, he's really great for that. Um, there are kind of some better visions, but I do like him a lot. Up next, uh, one of my favorite uncommons in the entire set, Wanda Maximoff. Again, from the spooktacular episode with her classic comic look. And yeah, like I said, one of my favorite uncommons. She's just great. She has that shape change where when it succeeds, heal her a click. She's got the stop click, um, which I love, by the way. Please stand by. That was the, at the end of every episode. And it's always like, ah, no, why? So that stop, I just think is just so perfect for this whole uh, group of characters that have it. And then she's got probability control when Wanda Maximoff uses it to re-roll a friendly attack roll if the attack hits after resolutions remove an action token from the attacker. I mean, how good is that? Prob is already so good, but if it turns your friendly character's attack into a hit, then you get to take the action token off. So good. Uh, she's also got mind control with six range, 10 attack, and a 19 defense with defend right off the start uh, with that prob, so she can also prob your opponent's rolls trying to hit that 19 for only 45 points and she's got a stop click um, and you know she's got the shape change on top of it mystics team ability i mean what more do you want for 45 points just carry her around with you get that 19 defend in that prob and uh, she can occasionally you know mind control some stuff so she's great and uh, one of my favorite uncommons up next we got their kid tommy maximoff he grows up to become speed eventually. Hopefully we see that in the MCU. And he kind of had the Quicksilver outfit from his uncle there in the uh, episode. Pretty cool. Um, he also has the shape change that heals him a click. He's also got a stop click. And he's got this special attack power that gives him precision strike. And when he hits with a close attack, hit characters immediately drop any held objects and or unequips any equipment. I think that is super good, especially because he's also only 45 points. He's got hypersonic to run up and hit with that uh, precision strike. And he also got the mystics, you know, very cool uh, effect to have to just unequip stuff from people. Very powerful, I think. Um, only 45 points, you know, the shape change, the stop, super senses. So he's got double rollouts. And even if you do hit him, you're taking a mystic. So um, I'm kind of surprised I haven't seen more people play him. I think he's pretty amazing for 45 points. But uh, maybe if you had a little bit more movement with the hypersonic, or something, maybe had 11 attack or something, you know, I could see people actually playing him maybe competitively. He's kind of just shy 
of being that good, I think. But just like all the other spooktacular ones, he's great and I like him a lot. Up next, we got Kid Loki from the Loki show again. Um, this guy's actually crazy good. I think he is also probably one of my favorites of the uncommons here. So uh, he can also start the game with the Tesseract equipped, which um, I don't have the card working on getting that Loki, but uh, the Tesseract gives you phase teleport. And uh, if you use it, then you can use prob until your next turn. So, you know, that's not too bad for five points. Um, he's got leadership and shape change and unique modifier free choose a combat value other than damage till your next turn kid loki has opposing characters within range and line of fire modify the chosen value by minus one super useful um <laughs> and uh for only 30 points pretty crazy 10 movement with stealth 10 attack blades 18 willpower to keep running around and two damage with that leadership shape change special uh mystics also is very nice um, I would like to give this guy the test rack just to phase around a little bit better and uh, also be able to use prob. I think he'd be pretty nuts then, uh, you know, just choose like minus one attack for everybody or even minus one defense, you know, depending on if you're trying to attack them or whatever you're trying to do. And uh, then you could also prob. And it's pretty nuts. He's really, really good. Although if I don't give him the test rack, I also really want to try him out with the uh, emotional modifier because then you could just use that to choose another like minus one attack or minus one defense or something so he could either do minus one to both or you know minus two to one of them and uh yeah that'd be pretty nuts so anyway he's basically just a really powerful uncommon figure if you know how to position him correctly up next we've got another t'challa star lord we already took a look at the common version this time we got the uncommon unhelmeted version uh, so this one's pretty great as well, uh, probably the better of the two. When establishing theme teams, characters on your starting force with the minions of Thanos, Ravagers, or Wakanda keyword gain the Guardians of the Galaxy keyword. So he can bring a lot of people onto a Guardians of the Galaxy team. I think that alone uh, is worth trying him out for. He's also got energy shield deflection and super senses on his special uh, defense power there. And yeah, you know, Guardian's team ability. So running shot with a 12 attack pulse wave for four damage, uh, you know, gives you some good options there. Either pulse wave a big group or just shoot someone for four with a six range and uh, the energy shield super sense is special there. For a hundred points though, kind of, kind of expensive, uh, but he is a good ranged attacker. I personally prefer the 40 point line. I think, you know, yeah, you're losing like one on all of his stats but you're still getting to build that theme team with a bunch of different keywords and uh, he's still got running shot pulse wave and outwit. So, you know, I think the biggest thing you're losing is just um, that 12 attack, you know, a few clicks of health maybe, but I think he's really, really solid at 40 and uh, can do some really interesting themes <laughs> with all these really different keywords, minions of Thanos, Ravagers, Wakanda, and they all gain guardians of the galaxy. You can do some pretty weird stuff with that. And uh, I do kind of want to try him out and just see what kind of weird combos I can come up with. Um, so yeah, he's a really fun piece. Up next, we got Monica Rambeau, the like fully energy version of her this time. All see-through orange plastic there. Uh, so this one is another good cheap version of her unique modifier. When an opposing character makes a range attack targeting one or more adjacent friendly characters, modify their attack minus one. You know, that's really useful. So yeah, for 45 points, um, she's got a full dial of that attack power. She's got 18 with energy shield, phase teleport to get around. You know, nothing too crazy, but uh, that unique modifier could come in handy. You could use a shield team ability. And uh, yeah, I mean, 10 attack, three damage. I wish she had some range. It'd be nice if she had, you know, like maybe four or five range to at least make range attacks, but she's not too bad. I think I kind of like the common version a little bit more just because that one can actually just like take the attack for them. Uh, but the unique modifier could definitely come in handy. And up next, we've got Tyler Haywood, the uh, villain kind of in WandaVision. Um, so yeah, this guy is really good though on like a sword theme team with the uh, super rare prime vision that we'll look at later. Uh, but this guy's got leadership 
and when Tyler Haywood uses it and succeeds, this turn he has power. Move an adjacent friendly character up to half its speed value. If that character has the sword keyword after resolutions, it may make a close attack. So yeah, just giving people like move actions and then potentially letting them attack is pretty nuts because then they could also just go and attack themselves after that with their own action. Um, but yeah, he's got stealth and mastermind to keep him alive. In cap with a double target if he needs it. Um, and some shield team ability there as well to help out. Only 20 points. I mean... 20 points for the leadership and the shield team ability is pretty good as it is. Uh, but if you're on a sword theme team, then this the whole power action could really, uh, really make him just insane. So on the right team, I think he's super good on a sword theme. Uh, if he's on, I mean, he only has politician otherwise. Uh, but still, if you just need to like throw him in there for a cheap leadership you know, you can do that. I'd probably rather just throw Steve, skinny Steve Rogers on there. He's five points cheaper. But anyway, uh, I do think that if you're using him on sword, he becomes insane. So he is pretty great. Okay, and last but not least, again, for the uncommons, we have another Baron Zemo, this time with the classic purple mask. We finally got to see it in the show. And uh, here it is. And this guy is great, too. I really like both of the Baron Zemos in this set a lot. So this one has Outwit and Perplex. And when Baron Zemo uses either to target an opposing character, after resolutions, roll a d6 on a uh, 5 or 6, deal 1 penetrating damage to an opposing character that is adjacent to the targeted character. So, uh, you know, free damage is always great. You got to roll a 5 or 6, and it's the somebody adjacent to whoever you perplex or outwitted. Um, but, I mean, hey, free damage is free damage. 60 points. He's got that outwit and perplex special 6-range double target with the uh, precision strike. Stealth and mastermind to keep him safe. He's got the Masters of Evil team ability, which now is basically police, but for close attacks. So, uh, you know, carry him around with you and, uh, you know, get that minus one defense against adjacent opposing characters when they're making close attacks. Um, yeah, pretty useful. I do kind of wish he was a little bit less points, like 45, 50, um, 60, you know, I feel like he's just not quite doing everything I want him to do. If he had like a three damage for the first few clicks, maybe, I mean, yeah, you can precision strike like two people for one, I guess. And you can outwit and perplex to get the free damage. But I don't know. I still feel like he would have been better if he was like 50-ish points. Regardless, though, he is still great. And I do still like him a lot. But anyway, that's it for the uncommon. So catch us next time for the rares. All right, you guys. So that does it for this part of the set review. If you enjoyed it, make sure you smash that like button. It does help me out a lot. Let me know down in the comments your thoughts and opinions on all the awesome figures in this set. And of course, if you haven't already, make sure you click that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future videos. But if you guys would like to help support the channel even more, you can check the links in the description for our Patreon so you can see your name here in the credits with all these other awesome people. Uh, but that's going to do it for this one. Thanks again so much for watching. Until next time, this has been HeroClix Headquarters, signing off.